I am to starting my policy with IBC and looking to run all expenses through the policy. Can you speak more in depth on that strategy? Many wise words, many wise words from a young man. Thanks. Okay. Let's go to the drawing board. Screen, go here. <clears throat> so, running expenses through a life insurance policy. What do we need to know? Know your four major numbers first, right? So, here's a simple example. Mass mutual policy, right? I am funding, so this is mine. I got a, I got a policy funding 15K a year. Base premium is $1,500. And starting year one, I borrow between as low as 66% of what's available in cash. And I might, I might go as high as 80%. But I typically just do about 66, upwards of 80. I'm already two years in to the, the policy. So I've, I've got quite a bit of cash, you know, built up in there for, for such a small account. Okay. When you decide, you have to decide, okay, what bills am I running through this policy? The, I would say the best, most effective, biggest bang for your buck, you want to first look at all of your annual bills. Look at your monthly bills that can be switched to annual to save money, right? So look at any bill in your household that you pay for, that you're paying monthly, and ask yourself, if I switch to annual, does that save me money? In most cases, it will because you're paying that institution up front, therefore they give you a discount. So you save money. So not even incorporating the policy yet, you're already saving money just by doing that, right? So this $15,000 that I'm putting into the policy, I have already allocated that between 66% and upwards of 80% are bills. So it's, it's money I'm going to spend anyway. So 15,000 a year is money, right? A portion will get spent per year, no matter what. Whether I left the 15K in there and use my other money to pay that bill, but no matter what, the bill has to get paid, right? With me so far? So look at all of your annual bills, look at all your monthly bills that can be switched to annual to save money. Then I want you to look at all of your bills that can be paid with a credit card, with cash back rewards, preferably between one and 3%. Get whatever you can, get as much as you can. They go, I mean, Discover does 5%. Discover does a matching where they'll match your cash back at the end of the year or the first year, I believe. There's so many really cool, effective credit cards out there with tons of cash back reward points and all that stuff, right? If you manage it, you don't have to worry about being in debt. You're not in debt. If you use, like, you, let's say you're debt free, right? And you're using credit to pay for something you knowingly know that you spend each year no matter what. Like you know you're gonna spend it. How do we recapture that transaction? How do I recapture that money? Very simple. So you're leveraging the bank's money to pay your bills in full for the whole year, right? swiping it through a credit card, getting one to 3% in cash back rewards and maybe $100 in statement credit because you spent three to five grand in the first year or whatever the case may be. Then you borrow out of the policy the exact amount of money you spend per year, 
no matter what, right? You may have to start off small depending on how much capital you have to start with, but whatever the number is, I, I usually stick between 66 and 80%. You borrow it out in one shot out of the policy, and then you pay back the credit card in full and you're done. That's it. That means you're not going to pay back the loan, right? So recap, look at all of your annual bills, look at all your monthly bills that can be switched to annuals to save money, look at all your bills that can be paid with a credit card with cashback rewards, points, yada yada, all that stuff. We then borrow out of the policy according to the amount of expenses, nothing more, right? This is just for this one person that asked the question. This is not for everyone. Let me be totally clear and transparent. This is just for the person that's asking, hey, this is what I wanna do with my policy. So I'm answering that question. There's 500 different ways that we can use a policy. Okay, so we're just going over one. We then borrow out of the policy according to the amount of expenses, nothing more, and we do not pay back the policy loan. Leave it outstanding, okay? Then you are going to cash flow the difference throughout the year that we're in. That first policy year, the next 12 months, you're gonna cash flow the difference, right? Because you no longer have the bill. Does that make sense? You, you do not have the bill anymore. So if you ran, say you ran 10K of bills for the year, right? 10,000 divided by 12 is $833 cash flow per month back to your wallet, okay? Back to your checking account. What do I do with that cash flow? I hold on to it. So what I do is I stack the cash flow in a high yield savings account, preferably, right? I stack the cash flow in a high yield savings account, preferably, for the next 12 months. So that means 833 times 12, boom, I'll have 10,000 in my savings account built up, yes, with me. So I'll have 10,000 in my savings account built up. Then what happens? My anniversary date comes up for the policy. So I only have to come up with another 5K to max fund the policy for year two. Yes, with me? The loan is still outstanding. It's it's uh, earning interest and I'm being charged interest. It has no effect to my cash value that was originally in there. What it does have an effect to is my death benefit. I don't care about the death benefit because all I'm doing is running money through a policy that I'm going to spend. It's gonna get spent. All I'm doing is recapturing that money that you spend, putting it in an account that gives us a death benefit. So when you die, you still, your family still gets a tax-free death benefit, but then the money, you were able to use it for your whole entire life, the cash value that built up, and you'll have more each and every year. You'll have uninterrupted compounding interest no matter how many loans I take out. But you have to make sure that you're with a life insurance company that credits you the same interest rate or higher than what they're charging you in interest. Make sure that's the case. And you also do not wanna to borrow too much out of the policy, which is why I still use my velocity banking numbers. This is, this prevents me from over leveraging my, myself. So I start off with certain bills, not all, because it doesn't pay 
it doesn't pay to run all of your bills through a policy. It, it, may, it may not in the beginning. You may end up messing yourself up, getting all confused. So you want to start small, work your way up, and get better at it. It's kind of like how I like to do it. So year two, I only have to come up with another 5K. Well, that's coming from my cash flow. And then what do I do? 15K goes into the policy year two. So now I've put in 30,000 in principal, right? And then I borrow out year two, borrow out the same amount, same amount I did last year. Rinse and repeat. Now, you decide when you want to pay back the policy loans. You decide. You could do it in 10 years, you could do it in five years. Sometimes this is valuable for people who are in debt, so they're running certain stuff through the policy so that they can have more cash flow to pay off a debt that would increase their cash flow in time to still max fund their policy in year two, in year three, in year four, in year five. And so when they become debt free from the institutions, now they just start to pay themselves back and they pay nothing in interest, right? So if I have 15,000 in cash value earning 6% and I take out a loan for 9,000, right? I take out a loan for 9,000. Let's say the loan interest rate is 5%. This would be ideal. Either the loan interest rate be lower or equal to what I'm earning for the total amount of cash value. So 15,000 times 6% and then 9,000 times 5%. So 15,000 times 6% is 900 bucks. 900 is what I'll earn. 9,000 times 5%, 450 is what I pay. So the insurance company is not recognizing, that's where you get the word non-recognition or direct recognition. They're very similar in terms. But let's say I have a non-direct company like Mass Mutual, non-direct. So Mass Mutual is not recognizing that I took out a loan for 9,000 at 5%. They're going to keep crediting me six on the whole 15, period. This 9,000, 9K gets minus from the death benefit, okay? 9K minus it. From the death benefit, the total death benefit for that year. So 450 I paid in the first year. Okay, year two, I do it again. So now I got 9K plus 450 plus another 9K. So I got $18,450 in policy loans times that 5%. Does it equal 18,450 times 5%? Now I'm at $922.50. Okay, so let's say I got 15,000 in cash value the first year, and then the second year, maybe it's at, now it's at a maybe 28K total cash value. I got the 900 and then I added more premium and PUA. So 28,000 times 6%. It's $1,680, right? So even though my loan balance went up, my interest went up, so does my net cash value return will continue to be higher than that loan balance. So it's uninterrupting the growth of the cash. It's uninterrupted. As long as it's designed with the, where the loan interest rate is either lower or equal to. If it's higher, well then 
it could still work in theory, but you would have to borrow less. You don't want to borrow too much and then not earn the same or more. Right? So let's say let's say the loan interest rate was the same. Right? Let's say uh you know, 15k 6%, we already know, it's $900. I took out a I took out a loan for 9k. The same thing, the, the insurance company charges me 6%. Obviously, 9,000 at 6% is less than 15,000 at 6%. So this this would work. All right, let's do it the other way. Let's say 15k 6% 900, 9K, the loan interest rate is 6.5%. Ooh, will that work? 9,000 times 6.5%, it's 585. Now, the real question is it worked in the first year, but how much longer would that work for before it has an effect to my cash? value performance so that's what you want to be very very careful now there are insurance companies that exist that you never have to worry about the interest rate the loan interest rate being higher than the dividend especially right now in the economy that we're in interest rates are at zero and there will likely go to negative so i do expect that the dividend rate of life insurance companies will continue to go down but so will the loan interest rate because they calculate their loan interest rate based off what the market or what the Fed or what a certain like Moody's corporate bond yield something, right? Forget how it works. But that's how you would measure it. 